Hello and welcome. My name is Christina from Empowered Creator. I am a mindset and conscious manifesting teacher and coach, and this is my YouTube channel. Here I talk about all things law of assumption, mindset, conscious manifesting, the quantum universe, and a lot more. And my goal is to simplify everything. So if you guys like this content and you would like to see more of it, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel, comment on this video, like it, share it, and just stick around. Also, if you need any help with your specific situation, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, email coaching, small group coaching, as well as custom subliminals for whatever needs you may have. So if you're interested in any of these services, the links are below in the description box. You can click on them and they're going to take you to my website. With all that being said, let's jump into today's video. Today, I wanted to talk about a very important law that Neville himself has actually discussed in one of his books, and he calls it the law of reversibility. And we're going to discuss what that is, what it refers to. I'm actually going to read a little bit of Neville, just straight from the source to you guys. And we're going to discuss, like I said, what it is, what it means for us as conscious manifestors, how we can use it to support our manifestations, to support our faith in the law and in conscious manifesting, and how we can ultimately become better manifestors because of it, more, more confident manifestors. So let's get into it. So what is this law of reversibility? Well, simply put, any physical event, and by physical event, I mean anything that can happen in your 3D reality, um, a promotion at work, uh, you gain a big amount of money, you start a relationship with someone, you start a friendship with someone, um, you meet someone just in passing, um, or perhaps something unwanted, maybe a sickness, maybe a loss, maybe you lose a favorite object. Whatever it is, whatever physical event can happen in the 3D world um, actually produces a psychological effect in you. And by psychological effect, I mean um, something mental, something emotional, a reaction, a response. And essentially, the law of reversibility says that if a physical event can actually induce a psychological effect within us, the reverse, the opposite, is also true. That if you start with a psychological effect, the psychological event, the psychological movement, the mental, emotional movement, appropriating that, embracing that, embodying that, making that dominant is actually going to result in the physical event happening, which is the basis of all conscious manifesting. So this law of reversibility then tells us that if a physical event can actually induce a psychological effect within us, the opposite, the reverse is also true. So we can actually start with a psychological effect, a psychological event, and then if this is sustained, if this is persisted in, it is going to result in the physical event. This is the basis of all manifestation. This is the basis of all conscious manifesting, the law of assumption, the law of the universe. This is the core of everything. So I actually wanted to read to you guys a little bit from Neville's book. And the book is this, it's The Complete Reader, which I'm sure many of you have. And the actual book I'll be reading from is Prayer, The Art of Believing. It's uh, the first chapter, Law of Reversibility, which is the exact law we're discussing here today. And before I begin, Neville gives some examples in that chapter where he talks about electricity causing friction, but friction also causing electricity. And then um, heat causing electricity, but also electricity causing heat. And then electricity producing magnetism, but magnetism also producing electricity and so on. So and what Neville actually says in this chapter verbatim is this. If your realized prayer produces in you a definite feeling or state of consciousness, then inversely, that particular feeling or state of consciousness must produce your realized prayer. Because all transformations of force are reversible, you should always assume the feeling of your fulfilled wish. You should awaken within you the feeling that you are and have that which heretofore you desire to be and possess. This is easily done by contemplating the joy that would be yours were your objective and accomplished fact so that you live and move and have your being in the feeling that your wish is realized. The feeling of the wish fulfilled, if assumed and sustained, must objectify the state that would have created it. And then he goes on to say, if a physical fact 
can produce a psychological state. A psychological state can produce a physical fact, which is what I just discussed. If the effect A can be produced by the cause B, then inversely, the effect B can be produced by the cause A. So this is, I'm going to stop here. So this is what this Neville says in his book about the law of reversibility. Essentially, he's saying, if the physical fact can induce the psychological event, the psychological event, the psychological effect, appropriating and embodying the psychological effect of what we want is actually going to produce the physical event. So that is the law of reversibility in a nutshell. And this is why it's so important that we persist in the state that we want to see manifested. It's so important that we actually embody that state, that we start feeling like the person who has what we want to have, who is what we want to be. It's very, very important that we actually appropriate the state, that we embrace it, that we flow with it, that we make it our new state, that we start assuming it, believing it, start thinking like the person who is, has, does what we want, um, start thinking like that person and just in general embodying that state. This is why it's so important because as Neville said, if we actually assume the state of the wish fulfilled and we sustain it and we keep feeling it and we make it dominant, then by law, by the law of reversibility, by the law of assumption, by the law of the universe, because this is how things work, it has to manifest in the 3D reality. This is very important. And the reason I wanted to discuss it today is because sometimes you will hear, oh, conscious manifesting is woo-woo, oh, the law doesn't work, or it's not based on anything scientific, it's pseudoscience, it's this, it's this and that. Well, this is not true. It's actually how the universe works. It's where you put your attention, where you put your focus, where you put your energy, is what you see more of in your reality. And if you actually appropriate the feeling of the wish fulfilled, the end state, and you make it dominant, and you sustain it, well, then you are going to see that wish materialize in the 3D reality. That's what this law says. And it's very, very, very important. I hope you understand that. I hope that you can actually use it to support your faith in the law, to support your faith in yourself, to support your faith in what you're doing and what you're practicing as a conscious manifester, and that it can help to keep you going if you're feeling a little demotivated or um, maybe a little down, maybe a little doubtful. Hopefully this can help to keep you going because you know there is a scientific basis to it and also if you observe the world a little more carefully you're gonna see it it's very very obvious it's right in front of our eyes we just refuse to see it a lot of the time so i want you to use this as support to your faith in the law in yourself in your inner power and to actually keep going so i hope you use this to motivate yourself to keep going to overcome any doubts to reassure yourself and to actually keep persisting in your end state, in the end state of your desire being fulfilled and feeling that state, feeling like that person who already has that desire. With all that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video here. As always, I very much appreciate you guys being on this channel, watching this content. I love making this content for you and I look forward to seeing you all at the next video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.